I tell them you you may go and uh, uh, to your classroom because y'all don't see these kids. They be looking at us funny. <laughs> you see them? Yes, sir. Uh, when they leave, we start to get a little bit scared, but that's all right. We have about a few people out today. Uh, they have their reasons. Amen. Amen. And um, um, okay. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, again for blessing us to be back in the house of prayer. We honor you because you have been so good to us. And I've learned in my life, before I ask you for anything, just thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your healing power, your delivering power. Because we realize that all power, both in heaven and earth, is in your hands. You rule and you super rule in our lives. And so we thank you for the blessings that you've already bestowed upon us. And we pray that you will use us in your service, that you will be glorified in whatever we do and for whatever we say. I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. I want to thank God again for uh, Sister Selena, Sister Crystal, and Sister Valerie, who all... Um, Went in the water the other day. Amen. Amen. And uh, um, just so thankful that they have chosen to be with us here at Mary River Green. Amen. Amen. And that God is uh, uh, showing himself strong Amen. in their lives. Amen. And as Pastor Clark was telling y'all this morning, Amen. Your ministry of love. Because all of us have challenges in our life, and and we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a few minutes. But we all have challenges in our life that we won't fix. Amen. Amen. We want our loved ones to be saved. We want our loved ones to treat us right. Amen. We want this thing to be in place all the time. Amen. But I promise you. That by design, stuff is not going to be right all the time like you think it ought to be. Amen? Amen. I paid a $1,000 for a phone. And you know, um, well, really more than that. But they told me that, you know, it's out of date to put your phone on your side now. You know how they ever see people put their phones on the side now. You know, one thing, you get used to one thing, and then they change. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be in step, you don't have your phone on no, in one of them things on your side no more. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I paid for me a phone that, <laughs> that you could close up, and you put it in your pocket. Because I, a flip phone, that's what, that's what it's called, flip phone. Y'all ready to help me out with that? Mm -hmm. Amen? I flipped it so on to the... Till it started messing up, I couldn't even see. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I couldn't even see. Saturday, Friday, I couldn't even see, so I had to go get me another phone. Mm. And so instead of putting it on the side, I put it in my pocket mm. so that I could be in step. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Amen. So I had to get me another phone. But notice that there ain't no flip phone, though. Uh, <laughs> huh? Y'all give me that. I don't know what all that is. I got an Android. I pay y'all whatever y'all say I need. I can get it. Get it. I pay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm not asking y'all to give me the number. I just because I don't know what all I need. Maybe just get it. Huh? It's an Android. Right? So can y'all get it off? You give me after thinking. Give me after saying. Amen. <laughs> And y'all just give me what I need. I, I told them, I mean, I, I'm the second oldest person in here. <laughs> All that computer stuff, Pastor Clark asked me what the cash app was, but that is, I don't know nothing about no cash app. Tell me you. The money I use is in my pocket. And 
That's something you heard of her lady say she got mine and hers because she said what's mine is hers and what's hers is hers. I ain't got no problem with that. But as long as I got what's mine in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. And I got access to whatever I got. Amen. I may not know what bank it is, but I know I got a car to get it. <laughs> so stuff is going to happen to us. Amen. And since stuff happens to us, we have to understand that you cannot get so out of place that you forget who God is. You can't get out of place to forget who God is because God is there for a reason. Amen. He's there for a reason and we're going to have to learn how to trust him, how to believe in him, how to know who he is. Amen. Because God is God, and without him, we can do nothing. Amen? So from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, amen, we're going to begin at verses 4 through 6, and our scripture text is taken from verse 6. Sorry, that 
name. And he said, if you just use my name, you call upon me, call me by my name, I will answer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that's why you may hear us say, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, get right. In the name of Jesus, do this in the name of Jesus. Because it's at the name of Jesus Amen. that things will happen in your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 whatever you need, if you just know how to call it, maybe just visit his name. Okay? And he's always, he will always answer our prayers. Yeah. Amen? And it is, when you use that name, you usher in God by your faith. You have in faith in God, but you're, you're big God. You are, see, when you go through something, it lets you know what you love. It lets you know whether you trust him or not. Amen? If you had a rope, if you wanted to tie a gift with it, you would use it. But would you trust that rope to hang on if you're hanging across the Grand Canyon? Amen. It'll let you know whether you trust it or not. Amen. Amen. So when things are happening in your life, it will let you know if you trust God or not. It'll let you know if you trust him or not. Amen. It's how you treat him. It let you know how you love him. It let you know, amen, if you, if you trust him, then you ought to be calm in the midst of your storm. Because God is almighty. God is what? In control. Amen. And God has ability and he has power. Amen. There's no question about that. And that's why the Bible says in Luke 18 and 27. Get it there for me right quick. Luke 18 and 27. You say, Peter said, no. No. And he said, these things which are impossible with men. A possible work. Yeah, when man can't fix it, God can. <laughs> Amen. When what? What? When man can't fix it, God can. Amen. You you go to the doctor. The doctor give you medicine. He tells something. Y'all know that, don't you? When you take medicine, it may help one thing, but it tears up something. Amen. But when God heals. Oh, Lord, ain't, ain't, ain't no tear up nothing with that. Amen. Because God is able, amen. amen. So things that's impossible with man are possible with God, amen. amen. But sometimes it's saying that we forget how mighty and how powerful our God is, amen. amen. Do you know that God created the whole universe amen. just by speaking the word? Yes. He created the whole universe. Now, I don't know. I don't know if you understand yet how vast our universe is. I don't know if you know how vast our universe is. Do you know the moon is 100,000 miles away? The moon is 100,000 miles away. Pluto is 10 billion miles away. Out of way, scientists call the interstellar space. Right. Amen? Right. And it seems like we can't even imagine how far that is. Mm. And the nearest star to our galaxy is what they call a premoxial centurion. I read that, y'all, when you prepare this message. It's about 25 trillion miles away. Mm. And it says if you were traveling uh, uh, at the speed of light, it would take you a lifetime just to get there. But then, what's on the other side of that? No. Don't nobody know. Because man ain't even got that yet. Amen. That's why man put these satellites and stuff up in there. The closer you get, the satellite reaches a little bit further. Then they sent out another one. They sent so lot 70 years ago. And it's just not getting to where it wanted to be. And they can see a little bit further and a little bit further. Amen. But God created it all. Amen. Just by speaking the word. Amen. I read some one time saying that, that if the earth was one inch closer to the earth, we'll all burn up. Amen. And if it was one inch farther, we'll all flee to death. Amen. But God spoke it all. Amen. It made it happen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. I just don't know if you know how big your God is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but they don't know what's on the other side of what they know already. Amen. But after that, we just don't know. Amen. With that, 
being said, God is bigger, amen, than all of that we can think of. God did it just by doing what? Speaking the word. And God doesn't struggle like we struggle. Amen. He proved to Moses that he was mightier than Pharaoh's army. He proved to Joshua that he was bigger than the walls of Jericho. And all he told him to do was march around the wall seven times. Don't say nothing. But on the last day, you go around. When you get around, shout. And when they shout at you, that's why I saw the big pastor car trying to get there. All you got to do is open your mouth. I'm going to tell you a few minutes ago. Go down there and tell the folks to raise their hand and tell God for him. And they shouted. And when they shouted, see, sometimes you just got to let them know. When you trust in your God, so it's a portion you got to just open your mouth sometimes and tell them for him. Shout unto God the voice of triumph. And when they shouted, the Bible said the walls fell down flat. Yeah. I know. And what that means is when they fell down flat, they didn't have to go around no rock. They just went straight ahead and took the city. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody, tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Amen. And he told Joseph and Jehoshaphat, the battle don't belong to me or to man, but the battle belongs to the Lord. How many know the battle belongs to the Lord? Amen. Amen. And so he opened blinded eyes, he would stop deaf ears, and he called the dumb to speak and the lame to leap. Amen. Amen. And God's supposed to rule everything. Okay? And Isaiah 66 and 1 say he rules the heaven. By the corporate brother Jason. I mean Brother James. Isaiah 66 and 1. He says what? Isaiah 66 and 1. 66. Well, anyway, he rules the heaven. He said, heaven is my footstool. It is okay. Okay, Lord. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. And where is the house that you should build unto me, and where is the place of my bread? You know, in other words, he owns the heavens. Yeah. Amen. And I'm not going to ask you to find it because it'll take a little while, but Psalms 24. And one said, the earth is the Lord's. He owns everything. But we try to take his glory, but you can't take his glory. Proverbs 21 and 1 say that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the river of the water, he turns it whatsoever he will. In other words, he controls everything. And then Proverbs 34 says he rules the elements. Amen. And then 2 Kings 6 and 16 through 17 said he controls the enemy. And this is talking about when Elijah and his servant was in his house and the enemy was surrounding that house. Amen. See, when you can't see, you got a problem. When you can't see how big God is, you got a problem. And so the, 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 the servant, the Hazel, was scared. Amen. He was scared and because he could see the enemy, but he couldn't see God. But Elijah prayed, said, Lord, open up his eyes so he could see. And when he opened up his eyes, he saw this hill surrounding the enemy was the armies of God. Amen. And he rules Satan, he rules death, he rules hell. Amen. And my God, amen, he's, he's everything that I need. Amen. Somebody say he's a peace speaker and a problem solver. He's a miracle worker and a hard mender. He's my provider and my supplier. He's my shepherd and he's my soul. Amen. Amen. He's my sword and he is my shield. He heals. Amen. All of my, not some of but all of my diseases. He's a, he's a forgiver of my sins. He's a merciful and a majestic God. There's nothing too hard for God. He's the overseer of the overcomers. And who is it? Jesus is his name. Amen. Herod couldn't kill him. Learned men couldn't baffle him. Politicians couldn't bribe him. The Pharaohs couldn't trick him. And Pilate couldn't touch him. The devil couldn't budge him. And the cross couldn't keep him. The grave couldn't hold him. And there's no sickness that he cannot heal. Amen. Amen. He's bigger than AIDS or Alzheimer's. Amen. Lord have mercy. He's bigger than arthritis and anorexia. He's bigger than bulimia. All her sides. Amen. Cataracts or cancer. 
depression or diabetes. Every emphysema and epilepsy, hepatitis or heart disease, melanoma or migraine, tuberculosis or anything. Amen. So how big is your God? If you got it, God can fix it. Amen. So how big is your God? And I just want to know, amen, that's a scripture where Jesus told his disciples to go to the other side. He said, let us get in this boat and go to the other side. And when they got in the boat, it started to the other side. The Bible says, that the Bible says, right. a storm broke out. Yeah. But Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, fast asleep. So what I'm trying to tell you is some of this stuff that we go through God allows. Amen. It allows, God allows to see if you trust him or not. See if you know how big he is in your life. Right, right. Amen. Because he was asleep. Yeah. But they, and see the key thing about this thing is the, those disciples saw over fishermen. Yeah. And they had been in the storm before and they saw how to break this storm off. So they, they had a right to be reserved. Amen. They had a right. They had known people, fish, other fishermen that had been in those storms before that had not ever come back. Amen. 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 And so, so Jesus was asleep. And what did they do? They went and they woke up Jesus. Because he said, let us go to the other side. And what I thought about then, I thought about Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you. No, I'll forsake you. So he's right there with you in the middle of the storm. And they woke up Jesus. And Jesus told them, said, Well, I want y'all to study this now because since I believe it's in the book of Mark because the all of them put this little word in there. Amen. But Jesus asked him, he woke up, he calmed the storms in their life. Amen. All he said was, Peace, peace to you. Uh -huh. And then he turned to God on the disciples. He said, Why are you so fearful? Now you may have a right to understand because you've been in a storm before. But why are you so fearful? In other words, why are you acting like this? Acting like I don't care, but I'm right here with you. So folks act like they don't care. They don't act like they don't know how big God is. He's big enough to calm the storms in your life. So he asked him a question, why are you so fearful? Amen. So I'm asking you, why? When you say you serve a big God, why are you so fearful? Amen. Amen. Why are you acting like this? Why are you acting like God is so far away? And he created everything. Yeah. Why you act like he don't care when he created everything? Yeah. Why you crying and acting like he's not right there with you? Yeah. But he's right there in the boat with you. But he's calm and you just yeah. What's the reason for that? Because he's in the storm also. Amen. So he's in the storm also. So when you wake him up, don't let him turn the guard on you. Show God, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. Because when he said, let us go to the other side. This is what disturbed him. Because if God tell you to go to the other side, there's nothing that's going to stop you from getting to the other side. But we stop ourselves. We say, are oh, you coming over tonight? Did the Lord said the same in the creek go ride? You're going to let a creek oh, you didn't say ocean. You didn't say sea. You didn't say river. You just said lake. You just said pond. You say if the Lord said the same and the creek don't rise. The creek, the smallest increment of water that you can have. And you say if the creek don't rise. So how big is your God? Is he bigger than a creek? So he disturbed him. They didn't know how big he was. They disturbed him that he didn't understand, that they didn't understand who he is. So do you understand who the God you serve is? Yeah. Who, what he's able to do? I, I know, I mean, I know AIDS was out there. But God could cure AIDS. That's not the choice.
He's not going to look at you. He's going to see Jesus. Because you in him and he in you. Because how big is your God? He can do it for you if you learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Because the song said, I learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. Because I found out. How many found out? I found How many found out? I found out if I trust him, he will. Yeah, he will. I learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. Because I found out. I found out he said he'd never leave me, nor will he forsake me. He goes through the storm with me, the storms of life, all the problems, all the trials and tribulations. But we trust in our money. We trust in everybody else. We trust in all this and all that. When we get in trouble, call the police. Call the doctor. Call him. But how many times do we say, call Jesus? Get down on your knees and call him, your big God. Who made the galaxies, who made all the planets, who made all of this and made all that. God is for you. Yeah. And he said, if I be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. How many believe that? Oh, yeah. If God is for me, who will be against me? Oh, when your yeah. husband don't work right, who can be against you? Oh. Look at me. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I belong to God. Yeah. I belong to God. I'm God's child. I'm going to write my book. I'm a royal child. Yeah, I've been adopted into the royal family. Yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm God's child. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. The God who made the heaven. The God who made the universe. The God who created me. Yeah, amen. I think we people scientists don't understand why stuff don't grow back. Like y'all know sharks can grow back, don't you? Yeah, if it break off, it'll grow back, don't you? You know a little tail will grow back, don't you? But scientists don't understand why men don't reproduce stuff. When their teeth are gone, they don't understand why they don't come back. It don't come back because, or if your finger cut off, it don't come back. It don't come back because we leave in this walk of life. It was all called because of sin. But, but, but one thing about it, it's better to go to heaven lame than to have no whole body. Because I don't trust in this body, I trust in God. Amen. Because my God is a big God. Amen. And all to him I owe. I thank him for who he is in my Amen. life and what he has done. Amen. And if you're sick, call him. Because yes. he's able to heal. Yes. If you're lonely, call him. Yes. He's able to be a friend. Yes. Whatever you need, Amen. that's what God is. Yes. And that's all he's asking us to do is to trust him. Yes. How big is your God? Amen. I ought to say great. He's great. He's a great God. Amen. Amen. Because he spoke things into existence. And he can speak healing into your life. Yeah. And all he wants you to do is trust him. Everybody stand. Amen. He just